My name's Sarah, this is Abby, and welcome to Asul Unlimited. I'm a scuba instructor and I owned a dive shop in Indonesia until global shutdowns changed the trajectory of my career. I moved into my van out of necessity, but now it's my tool for traveling, teaching, and guiding dive expeditions worldwide. In this series, I'm returning to Indonesia for the first time since leaving in the hopes of gaining closure around all the loss from that season of my life. Speaking of dive expeditions, I have three coming up and spots are running out. I'm heading to Baja in December. I have a special LGBTQIA plus trip in January, also in Baja, and a shark research and conservation trip in Socorro in 2025. You can see all of the details for those trips on my website and I hope to dive with you very, very soon. Oh my goodness. Sorry. I'm at my dad's house. I'm all packed. My luggage is in the garage. I'm actually taking luggage this time so my shoulders don't get wrecked from 70 plus pounds of gear. <sighs> Can't believe I'm going back. Like, <laughs> oh my God. The real thing is I'm gonna miss you, sweet pea. Oh, thank you. She has been following me around like a shadow because she knows that something's going on. It's gonna be a long couple of travel days. I have a lot of feelings about going back to Indonesia. It still feels surreal that I'm going back and I'm taking a group of divers for the Komodo dive expedition. <sighs> Let's just do it. Let's go. You be good, okay? Don't be super sassy with the family. It never gets easier getting all the way over here from the United States, but all things considered, it went really well. The process for getting into the country is a heck of a lot easier than it's ever been before. Right now it's May, 2024, so who knows what could happen? Everything could change, but they switched over to an e-visa so you can process your visa online before you get here and you get like a, a printout with a QR code and you can store that on your phone. When you arrive, you skip the whole line, like everybody who's lined up to deal with their visa on arrival is waiting and you just go right through you scan your passport and that's it like it literally i was shocked there was a ton of traffic which like bali is there's always quite a bit of traffic because it has developed so much over the years and especially the last few years with people being here long term right people like me digital nomads we just um make places change my plan is to go to Nusa Penida, and my goal is to take the Wave 1 freediving course from Freedive Nusa. They're a company that I actually connected with when I owned the dive shop in Komodo, and they were thinking about doing freediving trips in Komodo, and so we kind of started talking there. We did like some live streams together, and they just seemed really cool. I never got to meet them. I never got to come out here. I don't have anything else to say because I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm hoping that I'm gonna feel a lot better tomorrow, but it, it's definitely time for bed. Nusa Penida is a short 45 minute boat ride from Sonor, and the island is packed with stunning landscapes, making it a popular stopover for anyone visiting Bali. Before jumping into my training, I wanted to do the tourist thing and visit some of the famous parts of Nusa Penida's west side. I hired a local driver and got on my way. The roads in Nusa Penida are not easy to navigate. 
They are small, windy, and packed with people. If you're not confident on a scooter, I don't recommend you venture out this way on your own. What's gonna be funny is that all of my video that's like this, it's gonna be me going like... <laughs> First up was the iconic Clinking Beach. You might recognize it from countless Instagram photos, and as such, the place is crawling with people. The crowds thin out a little as you start the sketchy hike down to the beach, but because of the nature of the trail, you are surrounded by people the whole way down. Wow, this seems mighty dangerous. This hike is not for the faint of heart. I saw many people doing it in sandals with handbags, making me very aware that one wrong move from any of us would take a train of people down the mountain. I only filmed the beginning of the descent because I was legit worried about safety. My mind was on high alert, paying attention to each and every step of everyone around me. Luckily, the beach was a fun refuge from the crowd. Oh man, this is murdery. Next stop was Broken Beach, which included Angel's Billabong, a natural infinity pool right on the edge of the ocean. When the tide is low, you can take a dip and enjoy the show of the waves crashing against the rocks. <laughs> the day ended with a beautiful sunset at Crystal Bay, after which I retreated to my hotel for a solid rest before my first day of freediving. I'm a buggy. Good morning. I'm heading to Freedive Noosa, and the goal for the next few days is to improve and fine tune my freediving skills. The island is waking up. I'm gonna get hit by one of these. It's funny because like everybody comes for day trips, so it's super crowded during the day, and then around dinner time you go out and you have food and whatever, and you start walking back and like no one's here. It's quite nice. It's pretty peaceful. Freedive Nusa is a busy shop with a reputation for strong training, fun dive trips, and a chill vibe. I've been around many shops in my career, and this place really impressed me with its clockwork level of organization and the most peaceful environment where you can truly practice the relaxation skills needed for freediving. The beginner course components include dry, land-based skill practice and theory, static and dynamic practice in the pool, and open water dives, including safety techniques. I've done a handful of different beginner freediving courses over the years and have struggled with the skills. If you wanna see my last experience with training, check out the video I made in Baja, California. I've linked that in the description. I keep coming back to this sport because freediving is incredibly liberating. It allows you to explore the ocean in a peaceful, unencumbered way. I've practiced yoga for more than 15 years and I teach classes in my Patreon community. So I'm drawn to the breath work and meditation aspect of the sport. Proper training is crucial because it teaches you how to dive safely and understand your body and mind while mitigating potential risks. Freediving is also all about connection. Connection with yourself, with the ocean and its creatures and with your dive team. The camaraderie in freediving is truly special because it's not an easy sport. Each diver goes through a journey encountering different blocks along the way, and we all hype each other up as we gain experience. Your training dives will have you drifting with buoys in the boat in the blue, deep water. The environment is very much focused on technique, which can be its own mind game because there are no distractions and each dive is on display for your whole team to watch and learn from. One of the cool things about taking courses here is exploring the shallow dive sites after training dives. Fun diving on the house reef is all about play. This area is a haven for new coral growth thanks to local conservation efforts, and the area is vibrant with marine life.
somatic training is where I'm most comfortable. Breath work has been a part of my yoga practice over the years, and I love the mental dance of finding calm when my body is pleading for breath. The requirement for the beginner's course is one minute and 30 seconds. And even if you think that's a long time, most people can easily achieve that with a few techniques taught in the course. The biggest hurdle is the mind game. As you hold your breath, carbon dioxide increases and provides you with the urge to breathe. The longer you hold your breath, the stronger this urge to breathe becomes. At some point in the breath hold, you will feel contractions from your diaphragm. And this is where relaxation and mind work really come into play. I can tell, tell you are close to your limit, you yeah. are hypoxic, you really? had bluish lips really? and okay. it means it was already hypoxia, okay. it was very long, yeah. that's why I told you, okay, let's yeah. go. Yeah. My instructor has been able to figure out my issue with equalization and it seems to be a soft palate issue that I don't have a lot of control over it or awareness behind it. So he gave me a balloon to practice with. I don't have the little piece that you use to like stick in your nose or whatever. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. But basically the idea is when you equalize, you need to have your soft palate lowered, right? So that air can actually go into you, you station tubes and everything. I'm able to do the frenzel normally, right? But I tested it yesterday and I was like, going, 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 and um, I was in like a straddle position and like bending my torso. And as I was getting closer to being upside down, I was feeling my soft palate like lift and close basically. So I could like make the movement with my larynx, but it wasn't actually doing the, the job of equalization, right? So that's the issue. I haven't had somebody explain it to me in that way and it was super helpful. So I'm going to let you guys witness the first time of me ever trying to do this. <laughs> I don't really know how to do this without that little piece. So it's supposed to go like out the mouth, right? I just got boogers all over this. <laughs> That looks crazy, but I think I'm doing it. <laughs> this is very hygienic. <laughs> the other way is through the mouth and trying to keep the soft palate down while, so that it will come out of my nose. And that's harder because the air pressure is gonna wanna push my soft palate up. <laughs> I don't know what to do. It's just going right back into my lungs. I don't got this. I think this is gonna take a lot more training. <laughs> Today is the final day of the course, so we're doing some dynamic practice, so swimming in a pool horizontally, and then we'll have our final dives in the open ocean. So we'll see how it goes. As you can see here, another struggle I have with freediving is the finning technique. My instructors called my issue scuba legs, where the finning movement begins lower around the knees. The goal is to move from the hips and kick the legs evenly through the front and back plane of the body. Another issue that may be unique to me, I tend to automatically go into a frog kick resting position anytime I stop or slow down. I can't hide the fact that I am primarily a scuba diver.
Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> I can't believe it. I have to show you this. Oh, you gotta. I still have Abby hair in my camera. I miss Abby. I use this, so this is my Sunto D4i. I bought this for my Dive Master course like a million years ago. And for any of you that know this computer, uh, know that it's very, very conservative. I have been using this for free diving. Yesterday, final dives. Let's see if I can show. That's 16.8 meters. I was down for just over a minute. I can't believe it. Little Miss can't equalize. Got down to almost 17 meters. <sighs> Not that free diving is about depth or anything, but the fact that I was able to equalize down to that depth is really cool. I never buy like souvenirs when I travel. It's just not something that I do, but Free Dive Nusa has a partner that makes these little training pieces. I decided to get one for myself so that I can continue practicing just so that it's easier and it's more fun. I can just right like that working on the nose <laughs> What I realized the other day is that I need to close my vocal cords and then work just the soft palate. And it is so much coordination that like, it doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> that little sound is my soft palate fighting for life. This is a very new thing for me. I'm terrible at it. And that's okay. I'm going to work on it and that's going to be my homework actually as I head to La Buen Bajo for my Komodo dive expedition. I'm incredibly excited, a little bit nervous, and I just uh, can't wait to show you guys about it. So if you want to see all of these adventures in Indonesia, subscribe. If you want more from my community, join Patreon. It's going to be a good time. And hopefully I'll see you on a dive expedition very, very soon. Before leaving the island, I knew I had to see my manta ray friends. June is not the season for manta rays in Komodo, so this was my shot. I tried booking the trip with Freedive Nusa to get away from the crowds, but due to last minute cancellations, had to go with one of the general operators in town. And it was interesting. I always love diving with manta rays, but these experiences remind me why it's better to book early and with responsible dive operators. Luckily, not many people could dive down, so I was able to steal some moments of peace by staying below the surface with these gorgeous creatures. If you're still watching, take a moment to tell me about your freediving experience. What are some of the things you're working on at the moment? And as always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Okay, love you, bye.